I'm back. Well, what have we got today? Oh, you've seen this one before. Well, maybe not. I don't know. But what this uh, this video is all about is to show you the uh, the guitars that I have, all one after the other. Now, I must say they're not in any particular order. Uh, you might have a, I don't know, $30,000 one next or not. Or you might have one of these that I bought for $600 <laughs> second hand. It covers a wide range of uh, guitars and I've been asked a couple of times by different people, well actually quite a few times by different people saying, hey Tony, why don't you run through all your guitars in one go, uh, all your collection that is, uh, and of course and the ones that I play and uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. Now I have to say that the, uh, you know, the quantity of guitars that I've got has been a sort of, I don't know, well over a 30 year or 35 year uh, time period for collecting. But it's not only collecting, I, you know, I review them, I play them, I do all sorts of things with them. And, uh, yeah, it, it makes a change to, uh, to actually run down them one after the other and uh, try and give you reasons why I'd buy a particular guitar or not buy a particular guitar. And I don't think that's ever been done uh, really. So some of these guitars didn't cost a lot of money, but others did cost a lot of money. And it's all relative to what the guitar is and uh, what I wanted to get out of it. But I'm going to cover uh, the aspects of whether I'd buy it again, or whether I wouldn't buy it again, or if I would buy it again, would I pay that price or wouldn't I pay that price, and things like that. So as well as getting a rundown on the whole guitar collection, uh, you're going to get a rundown on uh, what I think is or what isn't <laughs> or shouldn't have been in the collection. Uh, and I think that's a good uh, aspect to cover. Hmm. Well, we're going to start off, uh, because this one happens to be the first one on the table, uh, we're going to start off with this, what looks like a Les Paul. But in reality, isn't a Les Paul, it's a top guy. Yeah, if you want to see the review of this one, the in-depth review, have a look down in the text at the bottom of the video and uh, you'll see a link to every one of these which I have reviewed uh, or have not reviewed. And if I have, you can go to that review and see all about the particular guitar, in this case the Tokai, from front to back and everything that I did with it. And uh, that's actually very, uh, it's a very useful thing to go and have a look at because it does give you an idea of what this Tokai, for example, would be like when you buy it and what it's like by the time you've finished with it. So hold on, let's, uh, let's start as we mean to finish. Okay, well the top guy, this is uh, called a ULS 85Q. It's, if I remember right, from the early 2000s. So it's not the, the current ones that you might see out there. But this one's a Japanese one and I do talk about that in the, uh, in the in-depth review. The Japanese ones are definitely better than the non-Japanese ones. You can see the finish is pretty awesome really. Maple top. Oops. Solid mahogany back. Got all the things on it you'd expect it to have. It's got a really nice uh, neck. There's no uh, scarf joint or anything like that. It's all just like. To be honest, it's nearly exactly like a Les Paul except that on the ends of these frets uh, that the plastic doesn't go over as in some of the later Les Pauls. So what else did I do? You see on the tuners up there that I actually fitted Gibson ones because I had some spare ones. Oh knock. <laughs> yeah so this one uh, fitted the tuners. I upgraded the electronics a little bit. I fitted new uh, pickups and these are, uh, what are they, bare knuckle pickups, mules indeed, and uh, messed around with a couple of other little bits and pieces, but apart from that, that's as it comes, I set it up, it's just like a Les Paul, honestly, it really is. This one cost me, at the time, uh, from a, a local uh, guitar show, cost me just £400 or $600, I ended up spending about another 400 on it. So for your 800 uh, pounds or your thousand dollars, well, it's as good as any Les Paul that I've got, actually. <laughs> what I want, but we'll come to that. So 
that's the Tokai. eye. Uh, I can recommend that. And would I buy it again for me £400 and fit the £400 worth of parts? Absolutely. One awesome guitar. Remember that. If you see one of these cheap, grab it. Especially if it's Japanese. Let's go find another guitar. Well, I'm back. On to the next one. Oh my God, what we got here? <laughs> well, there is a review of this one as well on the internet. And uh, again, look in the text down there and you'll see the in-depth review. I'm just skimming the surface with this one. Well, I'm skimming the surface actually with every guitar I show. And you should really be going look at all those, uh, those other videos as well. Uh, if you really want to find out more about any one of the guitars that I show you. And there are some really great guitars like this one. You know, for some time now, uh, Gibson, the company, have been accused of making, quote, crap guitars. <laughs> That's what they say. Well, you know what? Since about 1972 to now, I've never bought, quote, a crap Gibson. Every single Gibson Les Paul or SG or whatever it has been uh, that I've bought from that company has always been absolutely perfect. And don't let anybody tell you. Don't let them all gang up because they, <laughs> they're getting worse out there. Let me show you this one. This is a real good example of Gibson quality. And it really is quality. Oh my God, what is it? Well, the chances are, if you weren't around in 2008, or you didn't look very close, you wouldn't have seen one of these guitars. This is a uh, Gibson Les Paul with no name on the top. We'll come back to that. There it is. This is called a Gibson Les Paul Spotlight. Uh, now, it's not a Spotlight Special, which some of you might have heard of. Those were around in 1983, 1984. But in 2008, Gibson decided to make uh, just about 200 of these, or 180 to 200, something like that it was. And here it is. Uh, it's got this piece of wood in the middle that denotes the sort of spotlight type of thing that you get on the originals. On these, it's a bit wider. On the originals, it was about this, this wide. It was a little thinner, thinner thing. I didn't think it looked as good. I think this looks better. It's like, I think this is walnut. I've been asleep. It's got incredibly well-figured maple, and it's got a black binding, if you can see that. What a sort of a dark brown. It's dark brown rather than black, isn't it? Oh, very dark brown. But it, it's nice, and it's, it, there's no things on this where people say, oh, it sticks up, or there's grooves, or there's this, or there's that. Don't know what pickups are in it, because I never went and checked, but uh, it does sound particularly awesome. Uh, standard everything. It's got gold on it. It's an incredible neck. Again, on this one, if you actually look at this one, you can see that the frets are ended off with that plastic, just like Gibson always did make. On the back, we've got mahogany. Very nice mahogany. The neck has no scarf joint. There's no costs cut anywhere. It's got these type of Grover tuners. Very nice. But interestingly, on the front of this one, I can get in where I need to have it, you can see that this is not black. This is actually, it's got the wood on there, but it's not stained. So it makes the, the guitar rather different than the ones you might come across. Uh, in fact, I've never seen another Les Paul like that. Uh, maybe there are some, but maybe there aren't. Really uh, nice. And you've got the sort of mother of uh, toilet seat <laughs> on there. All very nice. 2008. Now what did I pay for that one? I think at the time I paid about, uh, I don't know, it was probably about $2,200. And I bought this one uh, yeah, oh, I'm going to depths where I bought it, but I paid twenty-two hundred dollars, and that at that time was about eighteen hundred pounds. What's interesting about it? It is Gibson Custom Shop. It's a custom shop, eight one four zero something or other. And I won't tell you. I've seen copies of this uh, all over the place. I've been uh, shows in uh, Europe, you know, the music messer, and seen these copies of these hanging on the wall although I must say they're a pretty pretty dire copy uh, if you actually know the real guitars 
you would never be confused, even though uh, they put Gibson on the top and did this and did that. So there it is, the Gibson Les Paul Spotlight guitar from Gibson Custom Shop and absolutely incredibly good. Would I buy it again? Absolutely I would buy it again. Your chances of seeing this particular model. Uh, I've never seen another one for sale. Uh, one that the sort of 200 came and went, or 180 as it was I think. Uh, that was it, you never saw any more. End of story, so second hand, nah, you just don't see them. You see the original 1983 Spotlight Special occasionally, but I've never seen one of these, actually one of this 2008 reissued for sale. An incredible collector's guitar, but I do play it. Let's go see what we got next. Okay, well, here's a bit of a difference uh, of the guitars that I've got. This is a 1999 RG 7620, seven string guitar. Don't ask me what pickups are in it. <laughs> I haven't a clue, except that they're seven string pickups. <laughs> it's got your usual uh, Ibanez type of bridge on there, and there's not much more I can say about it, except it's in the collection for good reason. Uh, in about 2007, uh, I made an album called uh, Burner Street, which was all, really it was all about uh, Jack the Ripper. <laughs> nice subject to work on. But I needed those really low, nasty tones in a track, like in a track called uh, Tumble Tea. I might stuff part of that on at the end of the video, or is it that way? <laughs> Doesn't really matter. But this guitar was used then, and I don't really use it much. It's more of in the collection, so to speak. It's what you'd expect. A big fat neck. Nice body. But if you look at it, this is a Japanese one. And as I said, 1999. F99 is the, the serial number, or the start of it. What else can I say? It's probably a base wood body. As I say, it's a massively fat neck. It's great if you play seven strings. I typically don't. But it will give you those tones uh, that you really want when you detuned or you just use a seven string. Not a lot else to say about it. It is reviewed in depth. Uh, so, as I said, look down there if you want to see the RG7620 from 1999. And uh, you'll see a link to the full review of this one. Quite a nice guitar in its own way. Difficult to play if you don't play them all the time. But uh, yeah, it's got its place. Yeah, so let's move on to the next. I'm back. You get out of breath running around. <laughs> okay, well, a lot of guys will have seen this one. This was a recent uh, guitar build uh, from Warmoth Parts that I undertook and spent a very long time on. In fact, I made a series of videos about this one and most of the other builds that I've ever done, uh, which totals five or six. Here it is. With this guitar, I wanted to achieve, uh, really, <laughs> the best I could ever do uh, with a Fender Stratocaster style of guitar. As I said, it's, there's no expense spared. It's got everything on here that you could ever think about. It's a hollow guitar. Uh, Really nice pickups. These are pickups that come from uh, Texas. I uh, forget the name of him. Doesn't really matter. But there they are. They're on the video. You go down there and have a look. You'll find out every single last thing about this guitar. I don't think I've actually done a separate review yet of this one. You know, on a one-in-one. -one. But I'm, I might. The neck is... Uh, Pretty much an awesome neck. It's uh, it's one of those uh, oven baked uh, ma maple necks and uh, roasted they call them. I call it oven baked. Doesn't make much difference. But you can see it's a pretty awesome neck. It's got a very nice profile on it. Uh, really really nice neck. And I, I fitted the Fender tuners, locking tuners at the top there. Got a custom shop uh, badge here. I did put that on in the end, which wasn't going to go on, but I like this one, it suits it. Only two knobs, yeah I like that because usually the volume's up here and it gets in my way. Yeah, everything else about the Strat, this Strat's pretty standard, I guess. 
except for the ability to adjust the neck down there if you can see I might put a picture or two up as we go through these videos showing you some of the features but I'm not going to spend all day on them it's really a, uh, about the collection what did this one cost me probably a lot of money <laughs> well it did cost me a lot of money I think uh, the overall price if I added everything together it was about I don't know, seventeen or eighteen hundred dollars. It could have been less, but you got to understand that I have to pay a lot of shipping and taxes and all that stuff to get it here in England. Uh, but for that equivalent of, uh, say, fifteen hundred pounds, as the dollars move these days, I still couldn't buy a Strat like this uh, from anywhere else. So it stays in my collection. And yeah, I do play this one. I don't play it by the hour. But uh, yeah, it's going to stay in the collection, probably until I'm not around and then uh, somebody will buy it. <laughs> or my grandson will steal it or something will happen. Uh, anyway, there it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The world's best Stratocaster. Well, it is to me. It might not be to you. So that's the first of a number of builds that we're going to see going through these videos. Because I do tend to keep them in my collection once I've built but not always. I've sold the odd one and you know how it goes. Would I buy another? Would I do this again? Uh, I'm afraid I would. <laughs> uh, I think this one's an awesome guitar that came out really, really well. And uh, I had to make a few adjustments on it, even after the build, uh, sort of off camera later. Uh, but now it's, uh, it's pretty much where I need it. Yeah, it's pretty perfect. So there. Let's go find the next guitar. Okay, what we got next? Well, I can't really be accused of uh, buying purely expensive guitars. I've got some quite cheap ones. Yeah, this is one of them. Well, it's relatively cheap, this one is. Uh, yeah, this is a, a PRS, it says a PRS SE that is, it's not the real deal. Made somewhere in the Far East, but uh, this is the Bernie Marsden one. You got a a letter with it signed by Bernie. You've even got a little back plate that you could put on the guitar around the back. It's just confirmation that Bernie Marsden, uh, you know, this is his design. Well, as you can see, it's probably veneer on the top. This one was particularly well set up. Uh, who knows what the pickups are? Don't know, don't care. I never can keep it for those reasons. Oh, it's this or it's that, you know. I didn't like it didn't have the little circle on. You, know, you get used to that after a while, especially with a shape like this, don't you? But maybe they're not allowed to. I can understand why. <laughs> you look at the neck, it's got all these uh, birds in it that you would expect to see on a PRS. And these are just, well, to be honest, they're just the same as on the real PRS. <laughs> they're, in fact, machined a little bit better than on the real deal. Often, not always. Around the back, you've got mahogany and it really is mahogany on this one it's not like i saw on one recently uh that was made of four parts and then veneered over the top this looks actually real i can see the grain running all the way through so looks to me like a two-piece it's got a neck that's been uh, smoothed out which is very nice and uh yeah this is a particular number of the bernie marsden model and this is number four of 25 so it's a sort of limited edition crappy tuners on the top and I never, never did like them but not much else you can say about it except for what you paid for it and uh, what it is it was a great bargain really and uh, I bought it to review I didn't buy it to collect but it's ended up being in my collection for now I'll probably end up selling it but <laughs> that's like everything it's not really a collector's guitar in the true sense but it is a particularly nice guitar. Well, what do I like and what don't I like? Well, I, I could never get on with these three here. Oh, they all like this. Great for Bernie. But I'm not Bernie, I'm Tony. It's, it rhymes, yeah. Pity I haven't got his talent either. <laughs> He's a particularly good player and you go and watch him and you realize how bad you are. <laughs> yeah, rapidly, yeah. But there's the guitar. What am I another? Well, to be honest, no, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't buy another one of these because, well, firstly, you probably can't get one because it's number four of 25 of this colouring and the rest of it. 
But also, uh, it's not really a collector's guitar. It's not a guitar I particularly play. It's sitting there in its soft case. That's what it comes with on this one. You know, the SE range don't have the real deal cases. Uh, so, yeah, it's a great guitar, but it's not for me. And it's not for my collection either. So eventually it will be sold. Don't knock the guitar though. If you're looking for a cheapish guitar, yeah, this is a good one. You've just got to get used to that. That's the only thing that I'd say. Uh, there'll be a review of it down there, because I did do that close up and personal of this one. And I think you'll, uh, anybody who hasn't seen it uh, should go and watch that. Uh, it's got some uh, great interesting features that I haven't covered. Uh, so that's the Bernie Marsden PRS SE. Yeah, let's see what we got next. Oh my God, what's he got now? <laughs> well, this is uh, half a guitar. Yeah, I had the pleasure of sawing it in half because when I actually bought it, it's a Harley Benton, by the way, you'll see it here. It was sold to me as less than half a guitar. So now I actually improved it somewhat. Uh, yeah, I bought this from Toman as a, an upgrade, to, 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 uh, to make an upgrade that is, from what should have been a pretty basic guitar. In fact, it was far less than a pretty basic guitar. I won't go into great depth, the video is down there, but I keep this guitar to show people just how bad a guitar can be uh, when you're buying purely on price. And this was bought purely on price for, I think about 170 pounds or something like that. And it wasn't worth threepence. Enough about that. Stays in my collection. Probably always will until I'm not around. And uh, yeah, I use it to drill holes and do different things that you might do on your Les Paul. But that's about the story of the Harley Benton. Let's never go back there, no matter what anybody says. They, well, it is awful. <laughs> it just reminds me. What about another? <laughs> No, I'd never buy another one. I'd never recommend another one. I'd never recommend the company that uh, sold it to me, which was Toman. And uh, yeah, you never want to go back. You never, just don't do it. Yeah, go and buy, a, a, go and buy one of those vintages. They're, they're two million times better for 30 quid difference. There's nothing else I can say about this piece of junk. We'll call it that. There was one last thing, just before I uh, move this out of the way, I love the way that they build these guitars and you know it's really funny to find that you could just take the <laughs> you could just take the nut out just like that it's supposed to be glued in but uh, I don't I don't think they know what glue is uh, and that's a good example of really everything I found <laughs> wrong with this guitar a million things wrong just so you're up to speed well here we are I videoed this guitar a thousand times I've played it every day or every other day for at least uh, well over 20 years. So uh, you could say that, uh, yeah, this is the sort of go-to guitar that I have. It's part of my collection because I play it and they're hard to get hold of. This one's uh, an RG550 LTD or Limited and they really were Limited. I do tell you on the video down there, if you go and review, have a look at the review in close-up, uh, exactly what year it was made and the rest, but it's getting on. I've covered it up in pen everywhere it's been knocked. It's got an Evo, I think it's an Evo 1 in the bridge. And in the neck, I've got a, a Seymour Duncan Jazz pickup. In the middle here, this Seymour Duncan here is a, a screaming demon. Never use it whatsoever. I've got this for switching the uh, humbucker to single coil or other. That's obvious what it does. The neck is awesome, <laughs> absolutely awesome. It's probably a base wood body. It's one of those licensed Floyd Rose thingies. Yeah. Tuners on the top, never been changed. This is how it came. I paid $500 for this from a guy in California and for the $500 it had a hard case and he shipped it from California to me. Oh my God, <laughs> that was what you call cheap bearing in mind the cost of the shipping's about $150 plus. Yeah, so this has remained the primary guitar that I've used over and over and over. 
Obviously, some of the other guitars I'm going to show you uh, have also been used uh, a lot, uh, particularly for recording. But this I'll just use any old time, any old place. If I have to go out somewhere with a guitar, this will be the one I take, so it just gets knocked around and thrown around. Not much more you can say. You can denote this guitar often by the shark teeth and the style of this uh, pit guard, we'll call it that. Not much more to say about it except that would I buy another one? I did. You're going to see it next. In fact, I'll bring that one up next. Uh, but that, that other one I've got that's coming up next uh, was a, a sort of newer guitar than this one. Uh, this is my original and this is the one uh, I really like. The other one is sort of oh, sort of different, although you might look at it on here and say, well, that's the same. But actually, it isn't the same. Uh, there's a huge difference between the two. The other one's never been modified. This one has. As I said, I would instantly buy another one of these. You should have seen one, and so should you, if you uh, get the chance to buy one. Some guys don't like thin necks. This has got a neck that's very much like a 7VWH, which is going to be coming up sometime. Uh, yeah, not much more I can say. $500. I did fit the pickup. That was another $100. And I did fit that pickup, which was another probably, I don't know, $70. So that's seven hundred dollars, and you've got something that's like uh, it's world class. Honestly, it's world class, and uh, all these guitars. This is the most played played guitar of all of them. So you go figure. Anyway, let me get another one of these, and then we can move along to the more nicer guitars coming up. Because this is just an everyday guitar. It's, unfortunately, it's the best to play. It's... Hold on. Well, here's the other uh, RG five fifty limited that I. I recently bought this because uh, it is a 550 Limited. It's slightly different than the the black one. Uh, it's got a nice reflector plate. It's a nice color and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's got the original pickups in. No half switch. Everything else seems to work okay. And I bought this for, I think, £470 with a case recently. That was an eBay buy. Uh, but you never really see these things, like I said. Everything else about it is pretty much standard RG series same uh, thin neck again this is a Japanese one I only buy the Japanese Ibanez's you don't want to go near the other stuff for what you pay for your 500 pounds which is about 700 dollars give or take uh, they are hard to better uh, you can go and get the prestige models uh, from Ibanez but those in fact, uh, <laughs> are made not in Japan, they're made somewhere else. The Japanese one started about 1,600 quid. So are these a bargain? You're darn right they are. All you need to do with this one, or I, I will do with this one eventually, is flip these pickups out, or at least these two, bin them and put some decent ones in with a little switch, just like the other one, and it's as playable. It's just as playable. It's got the same everything about it. What about another? Well, I've got two now. <laughs> no, I wouldn't buy another. But you, you should buy another. Uh, yeah, one awesome guitar. Uh, that I said you just don't see them. The, 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 the necks are awesome. Even with the V7 and V8 pickups, they, it sounds good. Everything about it uh, is awesome. So yeah, I would buy another one. It's in my collection as much as anything because this one does not get played anything like uh, the black one. Uh, and this one was built uh, again, probably in the 90s, but. The review I did on it will tell you the exact date, without me going and digging around. Review on this one will be down there as well. So that's it for the RG550 Limited series. Uh, don't, I haven't got any more of them coming up, although we've got some more Ibanez coming up among the other stuff. Got lots of guitars to go yet. Oh. Ah, Fender. The good old Fender Elite. Now I bought this guitar originally to review, but uh, I have played it quite a fair bit off and on as well, so it's in the collection, it'll probably stay there. And I guess as these things go up, it'll probably gain a bit of value. I did buy it before with any price rises and things like that. So I think I paid uh, £1,300, which was about $1,700 at the time. Bear in mind in England we got a 20% tax load as opposed to 7% or thereabouts. So there's the elite. It's got the Noiseless Pickup Series 4 on, uh, which I did use uh, on another guitar to modify recently when I bought a set of them. 
it's got this other stuff that you press in and out on there I'm not really a fan of that and I've got this little rubber underneath this to stop this turning that's a bit of a pain everything else about it I like I like the neck it feels as if it's been played for a while even from brand new I even like the adjuster down here nice and simple to uh, to work on it sounds great it's got a trim that doesn't go out of kilter much more you can say nice body real nice body looks to me like a two-piece there's one across there you can see it. and the rest is the second piece it's got a bit of a cutaway down here nice neck really nice neck I think if anything uh, that's what sets this guitar off it's got locking tuners pretty much like the, uh, the strap that I've already showed you that I've built and uh, really apart from that there's not much more you can say about these they, they're not cheap guitars really you can buy a Mexican for a third the price but it's in the collection it will probably stay there a long time and uh, yeah what more would you want from a Strat it doesn't sound like a regular Strat but I've got one of them coming up from 2008 this one was oh, has it got a date on it let's have a look yeah 2016 it was made just before that price increase would I buy another well if I didn't have this one I'd buy another let me put it that way around would I go for this color well maybe I would maybe I wouldn't I happen to like this color it sort of sets a strat off it's, it's called a vintage cherry I think it was called yeah I like vintage coconuts myself but <laughs> no it's vintage cherry uh, I love the cutaway on strats don't you especially with this big fat tummy of mine uh, so overall great guitar yeah I would buy another if I didn't have this one I've got this one so I won't buy another and uh, oh you want one buy one nothing wrong with them again we reviewed down there because I did quite a review on this one and uh, definitely worth watching yeah so let me go get the next one see what else we've got <laughs> so many guitars guys you can get on the really good stuff anytime. Uh, there'll be some more builds, self builds. Well, they are quite unique in their own way, so don't assume that oh, it's not worth looking at. Trust me, every guitar I've got is worth looking at. Even the Harley Benton, because it tells a story. Well, here we are. This is the first of a number of PRS guitars I've got that uh, I've bought over the years. I've played this one a bit, but I bought this one second hand. This is a PRS Custom 24 Artist Package well, What that really means is they upgrade the top a bit more They seem to refine the guitar even a little bit better if it's an artist pack uh, I can't easily describe that to you except that everything just seems nicer somehow it feels better the woods are better it's gold it's this it's that it's the other it's loads of differences uh, compared to the standard uh, custom 24 now I did have uh, I can't show it you today because I gave it to my grandson but uh, I've got a review of it uh, the PRS custom uh, green uh, guitar I had from 1991 that's reviewed down there on a close-up so you can get to see that one uh, it's not in my collection anymore because I gave it to my grandson like I said uh, to G him up a little bit you know sometimes these guys need just that little extra push there we go I've sort of zoomed in a bit closer so we can get a better view of the sort of guitars that are coming up not to say there was anything wrong with the others but as I look at the video and as we record it's nice to get closer isn't it yeah so there's the custom 24 artist pack I don't know whether you can see that it's a sort of grey coloured yeah very nice sort of heavy <laughs> type of thing it's got the birds in here and these are abalone birds yeah not baloney abalone and uh, yeah it plays too uh, these are these are nice inserts but to be honest they're not machined any better than that PRSSE that I showed you earlier uh, so although it's nicer materials uh, well actually they aren't they aren't inserted any better at all <laughs> it says a lot about the SE really doesn't it well the frets are really nice the, the neck it's one of those uh, wide thin necks uh, I like these necks it's out of tune maybe <laughs> this one comes by the way 
Uh, let me get a bit of the paperwork out. This one comes from Custom 24 Artist, uh, Serial 10221, and it was the 20th of January 2006. It came from Sound Control. Yeah, it's actually dated on the guitar as a 2005. But uh, I've got the guy that bought it originally, a guy in Leicester. I won't give you his details, but uh, yeah. Yeah, one of the things about this guitar, when I bought it, uh, it had a lot of work, or I say work, it had been knocked around on the neck under here. In fact, I can just about feel it now. I spent a long time getting rid of all that stuff. But still, it had a ring on or something and sort of damaged the neck. And there were also a lot of dents. There's, you can still see a few of them. Maybe you can't see them from there, but there's still a few little tiny dents on the guitar. So again, I spent a long time in this section here, uh, cutting it back and rubbing it down, and it got nearly rid of all that sort of junk. On the back here, you've got the, the sort of medium depth neck that PRS went to. They went even deeper than that, to about this deep at one stage, I believe. But uh, I can live with this one, but I can't live with the deep one. And uh, the original 1991 guitar was about, it was about that deep. So it was a real great player's guitar. So the earlier ones, prior to 95, I think it is, had the shorter uh, piece here. I also upgraded these two pieces of plastic uh, into, uh, I think this is uh, Brazilian, Brazilian rosewood, when you could do that. These days, well, you can't. <laughs> I doubt you can. Let's put it that way around. Tuners, Series 1, locking tuners, what you'd expect. Uh, the PRS at the top here is wood finish. All very nice. Sunk in name, all the rest of it. Great guitar, really. A great collector's guitar as well. Not just, uh, just a player's guitar, but you can use it for both, and I certainly do. I also, at one stage, bought some... Uh, <clears throat> These are for the pickups, and these are uh, Brazilian rosewood. So I can take them off and put the Brazilian ones on. I think they look quite nice as well, especially with having the Brazilian on the back. I'll leave them in the case for now, and uh, you know, don't do anything else with them. But at some stage I might. I just thought they were a great collector's thing. As I said, these days, your chances of buying these online are pretty remote. But in those days you could, a few years ago. Not much else I can say about this one. Uh, yeah, great collector's guitar. Would I buy another if I didn't have this one? Yes, I would. Uh, but I'd make sure it's an artist model, because the standard model... Uh, to be honest, you know, when you look at the standard model, they weren't cheap at the time, when, back in the 90s. 91 cost me, <laughs> believe it or not, it was about £3,800 in the UK in 1991. Today you can get them for like 1800 I think. <laughs> it just shows that uh, PRS has moved into machine making uh, as opposed to back then less machine making. And uh, investors as opposed to back then less investors. It's a sort of thing that runs through all the uh, PRSs uh, that I have. And uh, you can see the differences as you come along. Anyway, enough of this one. I would buy it again. I bought this one, by the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, for about £1,650-£1,700, something like that, second hand. So, high end for a second hand one, but it was an artist model and I know that they have a bit of a premium on them. So, there you go, that's the PRS Artist Custom 24. Yeah. Okay, well I'm back to another one of those guitars that I built uh, out of Warmoth parts. And this one was actually neck and body from Warmoth. But, uh, yeah, it's a Telecaster style of guitar, but it isn't a Telecaster. It's got uh, the, the humbucker style, uh, single coil size, sound particularly good. What else can I say? You've got a volume of tone, all you need. Five way, brilliant body, very, very light guitar, really light guitar. It's got a cutout at the back, there, if you look around the back, very nice one piece back. The neck's another one of those uh, roasted maple necks, I don't know if you can see how good that is. Uh, 
it's particularly nice and around the back and I fitted the fender pickups oh I even have a custom shop logo on there which is to Tony McKenzie custom shop not a fender one and uh, as I always do on these down at the oh, I, I do have a fender logo because it's fender licensed I've also got uh, one of those Wilkinson uh, nuts on there you know the, the one with the little ball bearings in and it does say uh, original mother funker design which is uh, what I always put on my guitars just to make sure that they're not actually picked up as counterfeits in some way but it is all licensed so I guess uh, it is a fender <laughs> you've got the adjuster here like on the last Warmoth guitar I showed you and uh, a very nice custom shop limited edition plate high quality plate what else can I tell you about it well there's a load of things going on on this guitar in the back uh, which you'll have to check the review it's down there uh, blue tally caster you'll need to look for and it shows you everything about this guitar I made this about I don't know probably a couple of years ago something like that it was the last tally caster I think it's the last one I made yeah, it is the last one I made. I'm not really a hyper fan of Telecasters, but as you can see with this one, it's not like a Telecaster. It's a Telecaster shape, and that's about it. Would I make another one of these uh, if I didn't have this one? I probably would, uh, because every one of these guitars that I, that I make as a project to show people how to do it, every one has different uh, facets uh, about uh, how I made the guitar. You know, this one's got the uh, Wilkinson uh, thing on it. I think it's a Wilkinson one. You know, that knot. You all know what I mean. This one's got a different bridge. The pickups are really more like Strat pickups. So, is it a Strat? <laughs> well, it's a Strat type man. It's a Strat volume and tone. Yeah, yeah, you could call it a Strat that's tally shaped. Very collectible guitar, in my opinion. I like it, doesn't matter whether you do. It sounds awesome. There's another video down there where it, uh, I even played it on a Helix and uh, yeah. At the end of every video, probably since I made this guitar and demoed the Helix, that sound is ticking at the end of the video. Uh, you get into the heavy stuff with everything moving around, but before that, uh, there's this nice sort of semi clean guitar, and it's this one. Great guitar. What did it cost me? It cost me, I think this one cost me about uh, 12, 1300 dollars equivalent. So it's about a thousand pounds, give or take, if I remember right. In the video down there, it tells you exactly what it cost. I've been asleep since I did a lot of this stuff. As you get older, it gets harder to remember exactly what you did at the time. <laughs> so there it is. Uh, it's really a, a Warmoth uh, Telecaster Strat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it that uh, it's got a Fender logo on it so what uh, Mother Funker rock on it's got these incredible pickups in uh, which I've used on other guitars slightly different models of them but uh, yeah, very nice pickups no hum or anything like that and they sound great they've got a nice high output if you want it yeah so that's the Blue Tally Hope you liked it. Let's go get the next one. Okay, this is another PRS, but this time in the shape of a Les Paul. <laughs> I love saying that. I don't think PRS loves me saying that, but it's a Les Paul. <laughs> no doubt it's a Les Paul. Others see it different. I see it as it really is, I guess. Yeah. Well, this is a, a, a private stock, number 2909. And this was made in uh, 2010, this one. As you can see, premium woods. What I like about it is it's got a trim on it. And a lot of these uh, style of what PRS makes somehow don't have the, the, the tremolo. Uh, I particularly like the tremolo on them. No tremolo, it's like half a job to me. It's supposed to not be a Les Paul, but all the ones that he makes that don't have it are just... Well, so Les Paul. <laughs> These pickups in here are 5909s, it says. Yeah, 5909. 
TM, and that's not Tony McCarthy, <laughs> but it should be. <laughs> There's no pulls and pushes on any of this. But one of the things about this guitar, uh, one of the reasons it was in the collection, is that these here are actually set up in the same way that a Les Paul is, which is very uncommon for one of these, I can tell you. So this this finish is burnt, it says here, you know, I've got all this thing here. Burnt orange burst, high gloss, nitro finish. Bird, bird inlays, uh, side dots, top and backwards on this guitar were personally hand selected by the dealer from the private stock vault. So there, so if you look at the back, I guess that's a one piece too. And sure enough it is. I won't go into depths of who the dealer was, the originator, but uh, I knew who he was. And I did see this guitar uh, at the price that they originally wanted for it. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you can say really. It's got a very nice neck on it. Again, it's PRS style, but it's more slightly rounded than the uh, than the other PRS customs that, that I've got. It's also got, uh, I think these are uh, Brazilian rosewood tips, all the usual stuff on the front, uh, all the signing and the rest on the back, I don't know what you can see, it's all in the, the review down there, so if you want to have a good close look at this one, you can. Yeah, got the entire build of it here, you get one of these things with it. Yeah, backward, obichi, who knows, topward, quilted maple. Fingerboard, Brazilian rosewood. Neckwood, mahogany. Model, single cut. Uh, headstock, oh, it's, it's all here. 5909 pickups, as I said. Didario 10s, they're not 10s anymore, I think I've dumped them. <laughs> uh, private stock leather case, and on it goes. And it's signed by Paul Smith and that other fella I've never really heard of, but don't worry, he's heard of him. <laughs> There it is. Is it perfect? No. Are any of the PRS's perfect? It's a good point to talk about while we're here. No, I haven't got a single PRS that doesn't have some type of problem, one problem or another. And it's usually, uh, to be honest, it's usually around this forks binding, imitation binding, because the inks run. And I haven't really seen a PRS where the inks don't run. It just it's one of them things nobody talks about, but if you actually look, it's there on every guitar. It's just that they can't solve the inks from running, it seems. Oh, look, they're a fourth. <laughs> what else can I say about it? Well, the inlays are nice. It's a light guitar as well. Uh, it does play just like a Les Paul would, except it's got a tremolo. It's got a nice reduced bit down here. Nice neck as well. Do you know the thing was originally valued or originally for sale at $13,000 plus tax? Yeah, that's uh, scary. Would I pay $13,000 plus tax? No. <laughs> I didn't pay anything like that, trust me. This was so cheap, relatively speaking, uh, that I bought it. And uh, yeah, I doubt you'd be able to buy one today without all that international aggravation with, uh, you know, uh, the uh, Brazilian rosewood, you know, with all the sites, paperwork and all the rest. So this was bought before the sites thing came into being. But just while we're on the subject of sites, uh, I believe that they're working on an update for 2018 or 2019 where a lot of this sort of stuff gets exempt it should. Uh, when you've seen this Brazilian that's out there, a lot of it sort of reclaims stuff these days. They don't go and just get it. Uh, sort of reclaim furniture and stuff like that. So, so it isn't pulling the forests down and things, you know, like that. And uh, if you notice, there's a lot of guitars around these days that don't have this on. They have some other wood. Even in the bodies, like this one's Obichi. Why is it Obichi? I don't know. Maybe he likes the name, Obichi. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference to me. It's just like 
tight mahogany, but slightly lighter, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah, so all the site stuff might change in 2018 or 19 if it gets ratified. There's a rat in there somewhere. And uh, yeah, then it will move forward again. If not, welcome zebra wood. <laughs> I've noticed on a lot of the makers now, uh, Taylor among them, I, there's loads of different companies. Uh, they're now using all these weird woods that you've never heard of them. They tell you how great they are, but never used them before. Have you ever noticed that? Anyway, that's enough about that. Here's the guitar. There it is. Yeah, the uh, private stock. 2909. Would I buy another one for the sort of money I paid? No. There's nothing wrong with the guitar. It's just I've paid a lot of money for the guitar. Relatively speaking, compared to just the run of the mill PRS. Uh, it does have the features that I wanted on it, that, to be fair to it. And, uh, but it wasn't certainly worth the money of the $13,000 that they wanted when they were trying to sell it. Indeed, they never did sell it and it was sold off into trade. Fancy that. So you have to go figure on that one. So, yeah, how much would I say it's really worth? I'd say it's probably worth about, if you pushed your luck, about £4,000 in England, I stress, in England. Not where you are in America, if you're in America. It's probably about $4,000 in America. But England's a funny place. Anyway, that's the PRS private stock. It is being collected. Will I keep it? Maybe, maybe not. I put it up for sale before. I might put it up for sale again. Who knows? Yeah, let's carry on. There's a lot to cover. <laughs> I've still got so many guitars. And every one of these guitars has its features. Trust me. It's all interesting stuff. Okay, well... I'm back onto Gibson. You know, that brand where they can't make a guitar, everybody says. Wow, what a rubbish. This is a, a guitar I bought actually to uh, partially show that Gibson could actually make a decent guitar for a relatively low cost, for what it is. It's a studio. It's been played. You can see, you've got the bits on the it. <laughs> it's a bit of a clean. But this is as it came from the factory basically, except I changed the strings to nines, which I like. It's a studio, wine red, gold parts, uh, all the bits on it you'd expect. It's a maple top, it's not that well figured on the top. And I'm not too worried about that, I bought the guitar, you know, as a relatively low cost. This one at the time cost about £950, that was about... Uh, $1,200, but don't forget the 20% UK tax, so it's probably cheaper than that in America. On the back you've got a single piece of mahogany and a, a typical uh, Gibson neck with no scarf joints or anything nasty like that. It's cut from a one piece, piece of uh, mahogany. This one was actually made in 2016 and uh, as I said, it's got all the features you'd expect on a Les Paul. The frets are, don't have the, the the sort of plastic on the end of the frets like you see on the more expensive Les Pauls. But uh, it doesn't affect it at all. It just plays really nice. Sounds really nice too. And there's a review down there uh, in the text that you can go and have a real close-up look at this guitar. I must say that they've gone up in price uh, since I bought this. <laughs> they've gone up quite a bit of money as well. I think they're about 1200 or 1250 pounds now in England. So it's a quite a big increase from the 950 I paid. Partly, not the reason of, oh, Gibson's jacked its price because it's been bust in two months or something. Uh, it's more a case, really, that the pound devalued uh, since I bought this. And uh, that had an effect on the fenders. Uh, that fender, which I showed you, went up from 1295 to about 17. Hundred pounds. That's a lot of difference. That's nearly two thousand dollars. So, don't assume that it's all oh, it's all Gibson and it's all this. It's all bad because it isn't all bad. And this is another example. If you go and check that review down there of a guitar that came from Gibson, absolutely perfect. Not good, but perfect. I've never had a bad one. 
everything's just as it should be. I'm not going to go into great depths about all the bits on these guitars because, as I said, you can go and look down in that review, which tells you everything. Uh, but just running through them as we go. Uh, so that's the studio. Would I buy another if I didn't have this one? Well, I would if I could get it for £950. <laughs> but I don't think I can now. Uh, I think you'll find that those prices have gone up and they're going to stay up until the pound moves the other way, which one day it will. It, they go down as the pound, but it will come back up. Make no mistake of that. Once you get rid of the Europhiles, I think. That's another story. Uh, so, yeah, I would buy another one. I do rate the guitar. It's a really, really good guitar. And, uh, yeah, not much more I can say about it. It's just good. It's as simple as that. Uh, some of the playing on this uh, was really nice as well. Uh, laid back, but really good. Yeah, let's go get the next guitar. Well, I'm back with another one. This is another one of my uh, guitars I made, or assembled, or built, or... I call it what you will. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this one's been around... Uh, few years. It's got the sm sported something or other, I forget what the word was, but it's in the review down there. You'll see it, sported strat. Uh, interestingly, this one's got a, a, a Jeff Beckneck, a genuine Fender Jeff Beckneck. And you can see the signature at the top there if you look really carefully. And if you don't, well, it says uh, original motherfunker on it again, but it is actually a genuine Fender American neck. Fender plate, Fender this, Fender that. Surprisingly, it's not a Fender bridge uh, because this was one of the options uh, that I went down when I was making this guitar. I don't think I've got anything special on this one. No. But I have got uh, three DiMarzios on here, Fast Track and some other, uh, I forget the models. There's Fast Track and Pro Track, I think they are. And another one I think is a Cruiser. I could be wrong on the Cruiser. Maybe that was the other guitar. It's all down there in the review, and uh, yeah, this one stays in my collection because it plays exceedingly well. And uh, yeah, this was uh, actually made around December, Jan well, December 2012 or January 13, about that sort of time. And I, I, I took a long time getting the right coloured plate, that sort of thing. This, yeah, well, it's okay, it works. Would I fit another one of them? Probably not. I could take it off and put a, a genuine Fender one on, I guess, but... Not a bad guitar overall. You can see the backs. Really nice. Yeah. Nice and... Uh, I wouldn't say it's dead light, but it's, it's light compared to some of the strats that you see. Uh, it stays in the collection. This one's had all the uh, copper cladding and all the rest done to it. You can see how it was built down there as well, uh, as well as another video where it's played and another video where, <coughs> excuse me, where uh, I close up the, the guitar so you could see everything about it. Uh, yeah, this is, this is quite one of the nice ones and uh, I doubt I'll be getting rid of it out of the collection anytime soon. What did it cost me? Uh, this cost me about £1,100 or maybe £1,150. It's about $1,400, something like that. Uh, because the neck cost me a fair amount of money. Uh, it's a genuine Fender, as I said, uh, Jeff Beck neck. Uh, really nice neck. It's like a 62 neck and uh, plays really well, you know. I've used this neck on a few of the, the builds that, I, that I've, I've done. And you might see another one of these or even two. I don't know. I forget some of the guitars, there's that many. <laughs> But overall, uh, great guitar. I couldn't buy anything like it for the money. Never would be able to. Uh, so, yeah, it's staying in the collection. Yeah, it still has to look at it before it wanders off. Uh, yeah, very impressive. Well, I'm back again. <laughs> You'll keep seeing me throughout the video. <laughs> anyway, moving on to this. Uh, this is an Ibanez uh, 7VWH, it's a Japanese one, and I bought this originally uh, back in about 1998 or thereabouts. There it is. It's very much like the uh, 
Steve Vai one, the one he plays, except he's bastardised all the stuff in it and hacked out around the back and stuff like that. Well, I don't do anything like that. I want you to keep this guitar as it is because, actually, if you go and check out uh, an album I made called ENIAC, might be up there a picture of it, you'll see this guitar on the front. And the reason you'll see it on the front is this guitar, plus a TSR 100, JCM 2000, that was it, yeah. Uh, those two had the, 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 the tone on that album and uh, it's a really, really good sound. Uh, I've never bettered it, so, so this guitar remains one of my favourite recording guitars to this day. It uh, only ever gets used for recording. It's got all the attributes that you might think. It's got the uh, Evo pickups, got the Steve Vai middle one that you can't buy anywhere else type of thing. It's got all this down the neck and, you know, there are Korean ones and all the rest of them that you see. Uh, they don't come anywhere near it, to be honest, they don't. You notice on this one as well, the top four frets are actually uh, scalloped out. Makes no difference whatsoever to me, but it might to you. Uh, locking at the top, usual Ibanez type of stuff. You can see around the back. It's Japanese, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It plays and sounds exactly as you can imagine it does. It is one awesome guitar that I won't probably ever sell. Uh, it stays in my collection. Uh, because it means a lot to me from the, the tones I achieved with it. Uh, really, really good rock tones. I've never bettered it, ever. Whether it's a Les Paul, or whether it's a PRS, or whether it's anything else, this is the guitar to better for the styles I play. It's even better than that black one, the black RG550 Limited. But this is, a, this is from a different place, if you know what I mean. Uh, this is what you'd, if you, if you were to go out on the street and get dressed up with a bow tie, it'd be this one. And if you went out on the street looking like me, like this, <laughs> you'd have the black one, right? But this one is, of the two, the better one. Not much else I can tell you about it. There is a review down there, real close up. That's worth going and having a look. In fact, every one of them are worth going and having a look. It's probably, uh... Older or basswood body goes in this way for the uh, cable, a bit weird. And the cheap Chinese ones don't come within a thousand miles of this. It does have a scarf joint down there, if you can see. Uh, if you can see, maybe you can, maybe you can't. The neck's incredibly thin and wide, it plays absolutely brilliantly. Yeah. So that's the Gem 7VWH. What did I pay for it? I paid about, uh, I think, £1,290 or £1,200 or something like that. It's in the review. Uh, way back when I bought it. And uh, I know in the review it shows you the original receipt and things like that. Today they're fetching about £2,400. So they've virtually doubled since I bought it. I can understand uh, why really. If you're buying one of the Japanese ones, uh, it's about the highest quality Japanese Ibanez uh, that I've ever played. Uh, it's as good as any. You could spend, well, they're fetching three and four thousand dollars or pounds even for some of those Ibanezes these days. And I don't think they're any better than this one. Uh, you might have a nicer piece of wood. So what? <laughs> so would I buy another? Yeah, I would. Uh, absolutely. Uh, because of what it uh, what it sounds like and what it plays like, yeah, yeah, go get yours, but don't buy Korean ones and them because they're not the same, absolutely not the same. Well, I'm back with another Strat, but uh, this time it's a real Strat, start to finish. Well, actually, it's not start to finish. I actually did a few mods on this one. This is a Fender Stratocaster from. I think 2008, I'm pretty sure it's 2008, but as you can see, yeah, it's got that Olympic white on it, I love that from the Hendrix thing, don't you? And it's got a, uh, a rosewood fingerboard, which I also like, feels very 62 this one does, in fact it looks very 62, extremely 62, but it does have uh, 
there's noiseless pickups, version 3s, and it doesn't actually tell you that it's got them in, which is a good thing. <laughs> but it does get rid of most of the hum, and it still sounds extremely nice, like a strap. But if you look carefully, you can see, for example, on these knobs, that it's all been aged. Well, this pit guard and these knobs and these bits on the end all came from a, uh, a guy at the Isle of Wight uh, called Fat Boy. How's it going, Fat Boy? <laughs> That's a great name. He's branched out into pickups and all sorts of things these days, but I didn't do any of that. I just bought this stuff as it was, fitted them on the guitar, kept all the electronics the same, just slapped them in place. And I think it gives this particular guitar that sort of patina of a sort of 62 strap that's hardly had any playing, but just had a bit of playing. And I remember at the time he said, oh, do you want cracks in these, uh, where the screws go? And I said, no, I don't want any cracks. I just want it to look older. Yeah, and that is exactly what it does. It's got these type of tuners, the run of the mill tuners. So it's not a 62 strat, of course it's not. But it's a very nice neck. Apart from that, it's all pretty, absolutely standard. So why is that in my collection? <laughs> well, it's in my collection because this is a particularly nice guitar. It's representative to me, although it doesn't have the nasty tuners, it's representative to me uh, very similar to a 62 strap to play, except that these pickups are different, but you can still get the sounds out. And I did have a 62 strat, uh, a real one. Uh, and I, I, I sold it some years ago because unlike this neck here, the neck that was on it was what's called a, a D size. Now, don't confuse that with a D shape. It can be very confusing. The D size is the thickness this way, yeah? And it was the thinnest neck. I mean, I could put my hand all the way around it, like Hendrix. Well, I couldn't play like him, of course, but I could put my hand all the way around it. You could literally do that with it. And it was about this, this wide, real thin neck. Ultimately, hard to play. Very, very difficult to play. So I did sell it. That's, that's why it's not in my collection. Had it had a proper neck, I'd have kept it, but I didn't. So there, so that's gone. I bought this brand new, it's got the plastic case, that flight case, you know, and all the rest. Not been playing a lot, but I do play it from time to time, but it's, a, it's in my collection as a collect, collector's guitar, really. Strangely enough, I'm not overly uh, enthusiastic about playing strats. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. You see how many I've got, and how many I've built, and the genuine ones, and the rest of it. And, uh, yeah. They're not as easy to play, but this one's quite good, and I like the ones with the N4 pickups as well, they're quite good. So, I paid at the time about uh, £800 or £850 for this one, brand new, uh, from a guy in London. I can't remember his name. Shop that had been there for years, and he walked out with this one. After I bought an Ibanez, and it was a piece of crap, it really was, and I took it back. And I said, no, I can't get on with this. I need to swap it for something else. So he gave me the full allowance back, and I bought this one. So there goes the story. Peter Cook's guitar world. That's who it was, if he's still around. Oh, Peter Cook. Uh, great bunch of guys they were. Uh, as I said, I'm not sure they still were. It's been a long time, since 2008. Well, 10 years. Uh, what else can I say about it? Would I buy another? If I didn't have this one, and... Uh, yeah, I'll buy another because I don't have another Olympic White and I think Olympic White and Hendrix goes together and uh, so does the Strat. By the way, there's some sinking going on. I can see it here, down there. So there is a joint going down there and that's the only joint. So it is a two-piece body. Yeah. Next. <laughs> now then, what have we got here? Well, this is a guitar that uh, I used to play all the time in about 95, 96 and summer 97 and then I put it away hmm, well what is it? well, it is a Gibson 
Richard Gibson, Jimmy Page, Wes Paul. The first issue. And the first issue that they had, apparently, didn't sell as many as they wanted to. It went between uh, 1995 and 99, end of 98, early 99. About four years. And it had got all these pots on it. You can have split coils, you can have this, you can do that, you can have reverse polarity, you can do everything that you can think about on there. And this is one of the first guitars, I think, that uh, sort of emulated Jimmy Page's Les Paul. And uh, yeah, I guess it does in its own way. It's not exactly the same, there's a few differences, but it doesn't really matter. It is a pretty unique guitar. On the back you've got a solid piece of mahogany. The neck is exactly as you'd expect, except for one thing, which is the profile of the neck they took directly from Jimmy Page's guitar because he used it for so long. And the profile on it is particularly awesome. <laughs> In fact, it's the best profile neck uh, on any Les Paul I've ever played. So, uh, partially why it's in the, in the collection, but there's another reason. When I bought this, I paid uh, £2,800 for this guitar at the time. And, uh, yeah, well, that was about £2,800 then was about uh, $4,000. But now they're fetching about uh, £5,000 or six or $7,000 still going up. So I'm, I'm very reluctant to sell this one. I wouldn't want to sell it. As it happens because it is probably uh, the best Les Paul I've got that I play uh, really yeah I'd say this is the best one it's got uh, rosewood neck these type of tuners which apparently are not the tuners that are on supposedly on this guitar that Jimmy Page has I think he changed the tuners for something else something like that doesn't really make much difference there's a review of this one down there, and there is a section where it gets played on one of the tracks. I might dump that down there as well. But as you can see, it's a pretty, uh, really good condition. I've got the actual piece that fits on here. I took that off years ago because it started wearing. It's got Jimmy Page's signature on it. And all the rest of it. So, yeah, really nice guitar. Not a mark on the back. You see that? And that's the, really the way that you want to be keeping your guitars if you keep them. If you go into a collection, it's all right playing them, but don't throw them around. Once you start throwing guitars around, you can't give them away, can you? <laughs> so as a collector's guitar, it's a, it's a really great guitar, and it will probably continue upwards, unlike some of the guitars I've got, which we're going to see, which continued downwards for a while. Uh, yeah, and I'll, we'll get to that later. But uh, that's the Jimmy Page Les Paul. As I said, review down there. You want to get really close with it and uh, you can find out everything there is to know about this guitar. Last look. There it is. Really nice finish. I like this colour up here. Oh, they got this one dead right. Actually, this one did have a problem when I bought it and it kept breaking strings, which has now really been pretty much resolved. But uh, they loaned me one, another one of these, and it had a big, thick, really thick red uh, coating around it. it was, to be honest, it was awful. It was nothing like Jimmy Page's. This is more like Jimmy Page's type of finish. And uh, it sounded rubbish, and it was rubbish. And uh, learn more about that down there. Yeah. Or go to my website. There's a complete write-up on most of these guitars. TonyMcKenzie.com Well, this is probably the last of the Les Pauls I've got, maybe. <laughs> we'll see as we go through them. But I don't think there's any more Les Pauls. And this was uh, one of the newest, along with the... Uh, you know, the studio I bought after this, but uh, when I bought this one, let's have a look how old it is. Oh. Yeah, doesn't tell me. I think it's about 2015. It's a really nice looking guitar. Really nice. Oh, faults, there are none. <laughs> Like I've always said, uh, on every guitar that I've got from Gibson, they're all perfect. <laughs> Gibson must have singled me out. That's what it is. 
But nevertheless, it's in my collection. And the reason it's in my collection is it's a really good example of Gibson quality in about 2000 and I think it might have been even 2016. Yeah, something like that. It is a Gibson custom shop, so should I expect the quality? Well, I'd expect the quality out of all Gibson guitars and the studio confirmed that. But this uh, guitar, it is pretty much pristine, I have to say. I'm not going to list all the pickups and all the rest of it because, as I said, they're in the review down there. You'll see it played as well in some of the videos that I've made. It's got a rosewood. Oh, no, it hasn't got rosewood. This is one of those rich lights. A rich light feels like rosewood, looks a bit like rosewood or ebony, but actually <laughs> it's a type of cardboard, <laughs> but not as you know it. So it doesn't even wear out anytime soon or nothing like that, but uh, it is what it is. And on this is a Les Paul Custom quilt top from the custom shop. That's what you get, right? That's what they put on it. I don't know why they put it on, but they do. You can see it there, Les Paul Custom, Gibson, da 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 da. Those are the type of tuners. Tuners? Yeah, 2014 it says here, 1894 to 2014. So it's probably, I think it was a bit newer than 2014 when I bought it. There's nothing I can say about it that's anything except perfect. <laughs> it just sounds great as a collector's guitar. This is what Gibson should be. Now, if you've got a Gibson that isn't quite as good or isn't as good, well, you should have took it back, shouldn't you? I know you're sitting on the internet griping about, it was no good when I bought it. Well, you should have taken it back. That's what the trick is, take it back. I've never had to take one back yet, but you know, some people claim that they do. I often wonder whether they did actually buy one. <laughs> you know, you get people like that, don't you? <clears throat> anyway, there it is. Yeah. One piece, all the stuff, the bindings, immaculate absolutely immaculate if you look at the frets frets have got the little pieces of plastic on the end just as they always did have on gibson or at least the gibsons that i used to know and uh yeah it's uh, pristine and perfect would i buy another if i didn't have this one well you know what i would i'd buy another one of these now when i bought this uh i had a choice I spoke to the guy and it came from uh, PMT in Birmingham. That's where this one came from. And uh, I'd had a Gibson Allwood. It's a very rare guitar, but when I got it, it got a scratch on the back. And when you're collecting guitars, you don't want scratches. So I let that one go back. And uh, he sold it to somebody else who later contacted me and said, well, Tony, this guitar is awesome. And it is, but he had a scratch on. And I, I didn't want the scratch. So. I bought this instead for a price that I couldn't refuse. And I said to the guy at the time, I said, well, it's a reasonable price. Can you go any further? He says, you won't go any further anywhere in this country than that price. And uh, he was probably right. I bought this uh, in that situation. They did me a deal and they showed me three tops, three separate tops. And this was the nicest of the three. I'm, I'm quite confident uh, about that. So this was the one I ordered and it arrived. I paid uh, probably $4,000 or equivalent, yeah, for this one. And as I've said, yeah, I would buy another, no question. This is not relieved either particularly. I don't think it is. Or if it is, they did a particularly bad job. Because <laughs> it's got a bit of weight to it, but uh, yeah, great guitar. So, you guys who don't like Gibson, that's the end of the Gibsons now. We're moving on to other stuff that you can uh, love or hate. It usually is a love-hate relationship with most guitars. I like this one. You may not. So what? Let's go to the next one. I'm sure you'll like that one. Won't you? <laughs> well, I'm back. <laughs> this time we've got a guitar that really is a collector's guitar. Uh, and I don't think you could really call it anything else. Uh, this is a, a PRS that was made in 2002 and uh, this is number six out of 100. I know that Santana's got 
or had I think number 56 or something like that quite a unique guitar very collectible I think uh, it does have its problems from time to time with this stuff on here the nickel tarnishes off a bit so do the screws and things like that so you do get all that going on can't do much about that strangely on this uh, like a lot of the guitars you see from PRS, they have a mix of gold parts and chrome or nickel parts, which is a bit weird. But he's done that for a while now, and uh, I'm not surprised really. Things they do, I don't know. Point is, obviously the main feature of this guitar is the, the front. <laughs> I think there's 460 odd pieces in there, and uh, yeah, there's a review of it down there, really close up. Uh, where you'll see everything about this guitar, everything you ever wanted to know about a PRS 2002, but we're afraid to ask. <laughs> it's all in there. And uh, these pickups, by the way, are what they call number seven pickups, which aren't very common, but they do sound particularly good. And uh, I might show you uh, another video down there where I played it on a couple of tracks. Uh, it has a particular sound. It, it can growl at you, literally. I know it's got this on, but it, it can literally growl. Which I think uh, is an awesome thing. The back, I'm not even sure what the back's made of. I'll assume it's mahogany, it could be anything. It's painted black. The neck is solid Brazilian rosewood. And uh, what they do is, or what they did at the time, is they reclaim that Brazilian rosewood from pieces of furniture. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with all of it because it is all in that video down there. And you can learn all about the features at the top of the neck and some of the things where it's been cut off uh, or not cut off where it wasn't long enough in fact uh, and they rejoin that uh, so it's all here it's all an awesome guitar there's only one thing wrong with this guitar I mean, it's the uh, dragon 2002 paul reed smith there's only one thing wrong with this guitar it's very heavy if you're as old as i am look at me beep 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 beep, beep. Yeah, if you're as old as I am, and not a snowflake, uh, yeah, this is about on the limit of where you'd bother to play. So, great for a collector, great to have in your collection. By the way, its original price on the internet, or in the, in the stores, in the places where I've seen it, in the UK it was £30,000, in the USA it was $30,000. Uh, in either way, it's far more than it's worth... <laughs> There's no doubt about that in my mind. I didn't pay that for it, but I, I bought it second hand off a guy who really needed the money to get a business going. And he bought this uh, at some stage, God knows where from, I think the USA. Can't be sure where he bought it from. But the fact is, I paid a good price for it. So that's why it's in the collection. Yeah, you'd want it in your collection, wouldn't you? <laughs> of course you would. Go and check the review for it, and you'll learn a lot about this guitar and uh, the others in the series. And uh, yeah, definitely worth having in your collection. Let's go move on. I'm back again. Now another Strat. <laughs> Actually, I like this one. There's a few of them I really like. This one, again, has got a it's got a Jeff Beck neck, a genuine Fender. Again, the cost of the earth and the. And I had this body made, custom made, at Warmoth. I think I made a good choice. <laughs> the finish is, well, it's awesome. I've never seen any strap better than this, actually. And it's finished. The gold and the blue with this forks binding around the edge. It really sets the thing off, you know what I mean? Look at the back of it. It's one piece... Uh, of ash just a solid singular piece of ash fender custom shop uh, plate call it that and the neck was made uh, probably in 2000 oh, I can't tell you <laughs> but it is as you can see there genuine fender Jeff Beck neck which is very much like a 62 neck. I've talked about this on some of the others. 
I fitted a, a, a tremolo that was a, what is it, a blade runner, if you've ever heard of them. And th this blade runner, it basically has this end piece fixed to the body and the, the, the rest of it uh, rotates on a piece of st a steel, uh, spring steel. So it, it floats all the time, there's no feel to it. It's, it's really a bit of a weird thing, but once you get used to it, uh, it's really good. So this guitar, I wanted to be something special when I made it. Like every guitar that I've showed you that I put together, assembled, built, made, you call it what you like. Every one of them has all these different features. There's a lot of different features. On this one, this had, uh, when I built the guitar, it had uh, Seymour Duncan Antiquities in there. Antiquity 2s, I think they were. But you know what? I couldn't get on with them, really. It was very smooth, but it was it's like a bit of a... Well, pussycat. We'll call it that. It didn't have that drive that I wanted. So, when these N4 pickups came out, which is what them are now, I decided to fit the N4 pickups into this guitar because I couldn't get on with the other ones. They, were, they just didn't have the drive for me. My style of playing is a little bit different than a classic strut player. I'm just different than that. So I fitted these in there and I had a bit of a job fitting them in because of the heights and things. I mean, it's all perfect now, but I did spend some time doing that. So that was an upgrade to a strap that I'd completed, but I still upgraded it because if I can't play them, I don't really want them. <laughs> it's got to be playable as well. Nice rosewood neck. Uh, these type of tuners, in case I haven't shown you, I usually put the locking tuners on, which were original on the Jeff Beck neck. So overall, great player's guitar. Really great player's guitar, but also a really great guitar to have in your collection. And that's why it's there. What did it cost me? Well, this wasn't one of the cheaper ones. Oops. <laughs> this wasn't one of the cheaper ones. The necks, as I've said, these necks cost typically at least $600. You know, if you get them from uh, the stratosphere or something like that. Overpriced, admittedly, but you won't get one in England. <laughs> That's for sure. The body also cost me about $700. So that's at least $1,300 on those two pieces there. And then you talk of this, which is a couple of hundred, and you talk of these pickups, which is probably 150. And then you've got the labour and the time and the, the tuners and the... By the time you've ended up with this, it's probably about an $1,800 guitar or £1,400 in England. But the fact is, you can't buy a guitar like that from Fender. You can't do it. There is no way. This one's hollow. It's light. It sounds really great. Sounds even more great now I've put those pickups on. And some people could say, oh, you could have bought a Fender like that, you know. Well, no, you couldn't. Uh, Fender don't make a guitar to this specification. Full stop. I've never seen a Blade Runner on one of you. And I've never seen uh, this combination between the N4 and the Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck does have noiseless pickups, I think I'm right in saying that. But you can't get this combination, and that's the point. That's why it's in the collection, one last look. Would I buy another if I didn't have one? Yeah, I'd make another one of these tomorrow. Uh, and I'd have fitted these pickups first rather than the antiquities, which are great for other guys. Let's move on. We're getting near the end now. There's still a few left though. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to take pictures of all of it when it's all done and uh, put them up on here probably. Yeah, be worth the wait, won't it? Well, it's another one of those self-builds, but this is the last Telecaster I've got, I think. I'm pretty sure. Well, what's this one about? Well, Again, it's a Warmoth product, and it's a Warmoth neck as well on this one, and uh, I do buy a few Warmoth necks. They've improved over the years. But... When I started to make this guitar, well, actually, before I started to make it, when I, when I bought the components to, to make it, I wanted a guitar that uh, was a little bit different than a regular Telecaster, which it is, it's, it is different. I'm not sure if you've got any pawns this, no. But 
You know, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2013, just weeks after ordering the components. Now, I'd made a previous Telecaster that looked surprisingly like this one. And I fitted on the end here a uh, Stets bar, if anybody has seen that, no doubt they have. But I couldn't get on with the Stets bar because it wouldn't really work in the way that I wanted it to work. And, you know, ultimately, I took the Stets bar off and I sold the guitar. Just couldn't get on with it. But there's another guy that could. <laughs> and I'll put a link down there of, uh, yeah, Mr. Proudfoot. Yeah, awesome, awesome musician. And he bought the guitar from me for a fair price. I didn't overcharge him. He knew it wasn't a real Fender. But he loved the guitar particularly because it had a cutout for a Telecaster. He wanted a Telecaster style, but he didn't want Ribic. <laughs> so anyway, I sold that and I wanted to make another. I wanted one for me. The original was for me, but Overall, it was sold. I bought the parts for this one, again from Warmoth. Everything other than the real stuff came from Warmoth. Uh, and I selected the top. It's a very light guitar because it's hollow, because I specified it to be hollow. And on some of my builds, you can drop this neck lower and uh, they call it a dot 720 mod but you can't have that unless you have the body custom made so i had the body custom made and all in the meantime along comes this prostate cancer could have knocked me over with a feather so if you are 39 or older yeah you can get it at 39 if you're 39 or older go and get checked for prostate cancer every couple of years at worst right at the worst if you don't get checked You'll be like some of the guys that I met that had these, what they call a PSA reading, way, way that way. In fact, so high, did they survive? I don't know. I survived because I caught mine early. And the secret with uh, prostate cancer is to get caught early. So 39 isn't really that old. You think it is if you're younger. But trust me, it'll creep up on you like that. You'll blink and you'll be 39. So always get checked about that. Anyway, let's get back to the guitar. I just wanted to raise that point just while we're going through this stuff because there are a lot of guys that watch my stuff that are 39 or over. Yeah. Okay, so this is a quilt top. You can see it's joined just. It really is an incredibly well-matched uh, top. The back was Swamp Ash. I tend not to have older. I like the ash. I like the way it's done. A couple of battery boxes in case I want to change the pickups at some stage. I didn't actually implement them, but they're on there. Serial number 62166. I forget where I had that number from, but it's off some famous guitar somewhere. These pickups are non-standard pickups in so much as the, well... It's Telecaster sized and it fits the hole and it's designed for it, but this one isn't really. Or is it? Well, if you ever heard of Danny Gatton, I might have mentioned it earlier in this video, I don't know. But Danny Gatton was a wizard at playing almost any style you wanted and he, he got together with uh, uh, JBE, I think they called, Joe Barden Pickups. Yeah, and he, this is a, a Danny Gatton pickup. And so is that one. Now you notice it's bigger than the original Telecaster thing. So all the stories behind this guitar, they're all there if you just watch them. And you can see the whole review down there. But that's just one of the many, many features that are on this guitar and make it so that it's part of my collection. The neck is, uh, it's not a Fender guitar, but they are Fender authorised. So I have a Fender logo on there, just for me, not for anybody else. But it's a bird's eye maple neck. Really nice neck if you can see that. Overall, one awesome guitar. Um, <coughs> excuse me. If I'd have uh, had one like this and sold it, I'd have made another. And indeed, that's exactly what I did. I made another. What did this one cost me? 
I think the total for this was about uh, 1100 to 1200 pounds, which makes it to the 15 hundred dollars area but remember in the UK I've got all those tax charges at 20% and the shipping charges as well so you could have made one if you're based in the USA uh, quite a lot cheaper actually uh, the pickups were expensive Joe Barden pickups are expensive the neck was expensive because of what it is it's a real nice neck everything about it uh, yeah it reeks of quality type of tuners, I opted for standard tuners on this one as opposed to uh, the other stuff and I got one of those nuts in there that you can't quite see uh, one of those nuts in there that's you know a slippy one so to speak so that's the the Telecaster that I ended up with other than the blue one I like this one because I like this sort of thing this sort of finish so I would buy another You've heard the price, yeah, I, I love this guitar, it's a real great guitar, sounds good as well, uh, and those pickups really do uh, justice to the guitar, so that's why this one's in my collection. We're nearly there now, boys. <laughs> now then, this is the very last Strat, <laughs> there's only one more guitar after this, but this guitar has been seen by so many people. This was the very first Strat that I assembled, built, do what, as you will. It's got a real fender neck on. You see it there, mm, the big fat one type, rosewood. I had this body made, uh, and it's got a few features of it. It's light, because it's hollow. Uh, but it's got pickups in that you can't just buy anymore. And the guy that made these pickups all them years ago, he died some some while ago. And uh, yeah, it has an awesome sound. Check the review down there because this stuff isn't stuff you find every day. And you aren't going to find those pickups every day either. He did a, an incredible job. Other than that, uh, have I got any pulls on this? I don't think I have now. Some of them have got push pulls and some of them haven't. Some of them have got other electronics features that you can't see. I had this uh, pit guard or scratch plate made at Warmoth, along when I had the body made. I like the body, it's quite a nice body. It isn't overly figured, but it's figured enough to give you that feel. And the, 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 the pit guard or scratch plate and this work really well together. I put a standard Strat uh, tremolo on, and God, was it hard to find a gold one. <laughs> Round the back, some people have said, well, what are you doing using plywood on the body? Well, actually, it's not plywood. It's ash, and it's figured like that, because that's the way ash is figured. And you can see that, I would guess, it's a three-piece body, in fact. There's one there, one down there, and one down there. Uh-uh. So it's not a single piece. I've got a Eric Johnson serial plate on the back. I don't know why. <laughs> it's probably one I had spare at the time. And when I did originally make this guitar, I, uh, I did have some string trees in there, which I've taken out because you don't really need them when you put these in. These tuners uh, are the locking type. Now, originally, when I uh, had this guitar, or when I made the guitar, I put uh, chrome ones in here, it didn't look quite right. A lot of guys commented about that at the time. This is a Fender 60th neck, by the way, there's the little bit on it. So I fitted these, these gold ones, a bit later. And once you, once you do that, you don't need the string trees. So maybe I'll uh, fill them in one of these days. But they, are, they tell a story. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have seen this guitar. An awful lot of people have seen this guitar. When I made the video about this, uh, I didn't really expect it to be that dynamic. You know, a few thousand views. <laughs> it, was, it was made a fair number of years ago. <clears throat> I think it's about 2011 I made this. So you've got 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's about seven years ago, give or take. Give or take. Well, since then, uh, between the three videos that show it being made, it's had uh, near enough 1.3 million views. So an awful lot of people have seen this and uh, they continue to. It's still the highest ranking video even now, and it still be, gets watched all the time, uh, since all the way back in 2011. And the other guitars that I've built, none of them have the sort of viewing uh, experience on YouTube that this one does. And it still, as I said, continues to do so. So, one awesome guitar, really. It, it, it might not be to your liking or whatever, but it, it was built to what I wanted exactly to what I wanted with these pickups with this uh, the top the, this the that the, even the neck I wanted this neck Hendrix had one of them or something similar and uh, you know it's exactly what I wanted exactly what did it cost me well I think at the time that I think I paid about 500 for that body it wasn't as expensive as it could have been because the the top wasn't uh, you know the highest level of quality also, uh, you'll notice on this one it's got a scratch plate, so there was no 720 drop, which saves money again. Uh, I bought the neck for just a few hundred dollars, I think $300 or something like that. I think that came from the stratosphere. Well, the pickups I'd had from buying off this guy back in the 90s, and uh, there's not many of them about, but you need to see the full story of this guitar, and in particular those pickups, because... It really is, <laughs> it really is something that you won't see, uh, trust me. So down there, you can see how this thing was built from nothing. Literally from bits that came in. So that's the end of this one. There's only one more to go. And uh, I'm sure a lot of guys would know which one that is. But if you don't know me or you don't know my collection, yeah, it's a bit of a shocker. It's coming up next. Well, I'm back. This is the last guitar. Yeah, I used to have a tie-dye, by the way, a tie-dye Les Paul, uh, and I sold that, uh, I bought that in 1995 or 6. Sold it last year, it originally cost me about £1,300, and I sold it for about 2200 so it did gain, I had it in the box for years, because it was a collector's guitar, they only made a hundred of them. I just wanted to cover that, in case anybody's seen the tie-dyes that I had. Mm -hmm. But I'm away from tie-dyes now, I'm back on this. This is really the most, uh, one of the most important guitars that I have in my collection. Not the most important guitar, I don't think. The importance changes depends on its relativity of that guitar to me. So my, my most important guitar probably isn't yours. But I wanted to show you this guitar. This is a, a PRS Dragon 3 uh, that's never actually been played. Now you might say to me, well Tony, are you nuts? Why don't you get it out and go out there and just crank it, man? You know, as you would. No, you don't do that. Uh, with this type of guitar, this guitar was bought actually as an investment, which uh, well, I can talk about. Well, I'll talk about it a bit later when we've seen it. But let's have a look at it. There it is. It's probably, to me, and I'm not you, it's probably the best matched body top I've ever seen. Uh, when you see it in real life, it's all right seeing it there on camera. When you get down and watch the video of the close-up down there, you'll see it. It's down there. It's never been played, so you won't see it getting played. But, uh, yeah, you can uh, appreciate this when you close up to it. Who knows what pickups, they're all covered in the paperwork here, but you know what, well, I don't really care. They're whatever they were. This is number 55 out of 100. So it's about halfway through the Dragon 3 selection. There isn't a mark on it. It's absolutely pristine as brand new, which is what it should be uh, for a collector's guitar. If you look at the back, it's one piece. There's nothing anywhere on that. It's absolutely one piece. You've got the intermediate neck length again. 
they did get this long at one stage, I think. But this I can live with, or I could if I played it. I don't play it. The tuners are stage one tuners. But interestingly, uh, if you look at the Paul Reed Smith name there, that's not just gold writing. That's actually gold sunk into the top of the neck. That's real solid gold machined out and then sunk in. Uh, it's got the dragon down the neck, which if you go and look at the review, you'll appreciate the dragon then. You can't see it from here, really. Uh, it's got TM at the top there, which I'd like to say is Tony McKenzie, but Paul Smith wouldn't agree. He's like that. And even the strings here, as you see the strings, the strings have never been changed. That's how it comes out of the factory. Yeah. <laughs> Quite amazing. Dragon number 55. Dragon 3 number 55. Doesn't say anything else on there, except a serial number, which I aren't really in cover. And it's got these PRS tuners. And that's about it. That's all you get to see, really, about this guitar. Well, I can talk a bit about it because I've got some paperwork and things. Let's just have a look what I have got here. I'm not going to let you know everything. <laughs> now, there is a story behind this guitar. I didn't buy this from PRS and I didn't buy it from a PRS dealer. And people wanted far too much. <laughs> Again, these were a $30,000 guitar, new. $30,000, so it's a scary figure. I can see why they tried to charge that. And I dare say some people would have paid 30000 for them. I certainly didn't. Didn't pay anything like that sort of money. And part of the reason I didn't is who I bought it from. I bought it from a guy uh, that used to work at PRS. Now, this is how the story goes. The story is that, ah, yeah, well... When you work at PRS, you can buy a guitar with a discount. Now, it's not an inferior guitar or anything like that. It's the real deal. But you get a discount. But what you don't get is a certificate. <laughs> so that's what PRS would do. They would sell one of these to an employee. And you don't get a much higher employee than somebody like the sales director, do you? No. And uh, I believe that's the guy. That, that was was his original role, sales director, or something like that. Very high up. So this was the guitar that he bought, and he put it away under his uh, bed, I guess, for a rainy day for when he retired, so he could earn some money. And that's exactly what he did. And uh, I went along and saw this guitar for sale. Cover that up. There's the original information. This is actually the sticker from PRS. Yeah. Dragon Series 3, 1994, 11494, Dark Cherry Sunburst, number 55, serial number, whatever it is. In any case, I bought it in 2010. <coughs> so you can see that he'd had it a while. <laughs> Made in 1994, I believe. So, there it is. Another close look. Yeah, the dragon's everything, of course. And a lot of the dragon's solid gold. All embedded in there. I think there's 430 pieces or more that make that dragon up. And I think of the, of the three, the, the first dragon had an awful dragon on it. Horrible looking thing. The second dragon, well, it wasn't much different. But this dragon, this is the favourite, I'm afraid. This dragon on here is nigh on a perfect design. It's a really amazing design. You can watch a review and then you'll be able to see yourself. Never played. <laughs> Never actually played. Amazing. Well, there we go. That's the uh, rundown of my guitar collection to date. I've bought guitars, I've sold guitars, not for a living, just as a collector. And uh, maybe even somebody out there has got a guitar that I've sold or bought. I buy guitars in England and all over the show. So uh, I hope it's been interesting because I don't see many people running through 
this sort of thing in the way that I have. And if you go and read those full in-depth reviews down there in the text, oh, trust me, you're going to be there for months watching that stuff. And it's got, it's got information that you won't glean from any other place unless you own the guitars and you've done what I've done. I've been doing this uh, on YouTube since about 2009, remember. So I've had, well, nine years of it. <sighs> and it yeah. One more year and it'll be my 10th year. That's 10, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to put up a few pictures up. Well, it'll be covering the whole screen, actually. There's that many guitars. Probably two or three. I've got two or three areas. I can't fit them all on one chair. <laughs> and then I'll put them back away and uh, that'll be that for now. But I uh, hope it's been interesting. I really do. And... Uh, Watch out for some more reviews coming up. I've got a review coming up presently. Well, I say presently, it's probably a number of weeks away. Uh, really, what's probably uh, the best tube guitar amp in the world. And I'm not just saying that. Uh, you will be in wonderment about that amplifier and uh, how it's made. And I'll show you how it's made and everything else about it. It is a wondrous piece of equipment. A friend of mine introduced me to it and he was dead right but that's to come you know you won't find a review like that anywhere else a bit like this review here this quick overview of all my guitars you won't find it anywhere else till next time oh and don't forget to visit tonymckenzie.com if uh, you want to learn more i've got a load of stuff on there till next time now get out of here <laughs>